Okay, we now come to our last talk for today. We have Matija Šošić, who will be talking about Wasp, a DSL for building web apps with Prisma, React, and Node.js. So in case you're not familiar, Matija holds a master's in computer science from the University of Zagreb in Croatia, where he's also joining us today from. And he's an experienced software engineer with experience in various areas from writing bioinformatics algorithms for GPUs, to web development and compilers. And currently, Matija is working together with his twin brother. So as we mentioned in the beginning, three of our speakers today, Tim, Alex, and Matija, they all have twins. They're all twins. So Matija is working with his twin brother, Martin, on Wasp, and they are Y Combinator backed, uh, and they have the goal of streamlining web app development. So without any further delay, I bring you. Matija, hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, hello. Do you hear me? Is everything okay? Yep, we can hear you. Everything is working smoothly. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you, Daniel, very much for the introduction. Very kind of you. You were like said majority of my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. So let me just share the screen. Did I get the pronunciation of your surname right? Uh, almost, almost. Like it's okay. similar to sausage, so close enough. All right. uh, US people are always having a good laugh with our surname. So yeah, sharing a screen. Okay, uh, screen number one. Okay, cool, some inception. And yeah, you can see it now, I guess. Yeah, all right. Awesome, okay, awesome. I'll so, just, Matthew, I will make sure I just move you to this side. Okay, cool. All right, the stage and, is yours. Yeah, and I will just go full screen. Okay, awesome. Everybody, thank you for coming. So this is our first time actually presenting Wasp in public, so I am excited. And yeah, let's see how it goes. <laughs> so Wasp is a simple language for building web apps 10 times faster. And yeah, it works with React, Node.js, and Prisma. So as Daniel only kindly said already, like he gave a bit perspective on our background, but I will also give a bit more. So the team is currently my brother, Martin, and me. We are twin brothers. And we are both computer science masters here from Zagreb in Croatia. And during university, we worked in, like, in different companies, had our internships from Google to Palantir to Numi New York. We were also associates in Techstars, helping the companies in their batch. And we were also both in Singapore working on ML algorithms and I was working on GPU uh, algorithms for bioinformatics. So that was pretty exciting. So we were kind of always more on the deep tech side, but kind of whatever we kept doing, we always uh, actually ended up developing web apps because you know it's always like inevitable part of whatever product. So we also had like a lot of experience uh, with building web apps. So, and I also forgot to mention, like we are an open source project. So we also have uh, some contributors. So it's about like us plus about five to six contributors who are also helping with the code and it helps a lot. So why Wasp? So as I mentioned, like the main reason is actually we had a lot of experience with going to various technologies and it's coming like, we also had like a lot of frustrations. <laughs> so we started with kind of building our first web application with PHP and jQuery, then also on the front end went through Angular, Backbone, and now ended up with React. And also the, on the backend side, we use different stuff from PHP, Java, Python, and now most lately we have used Node. So we, we always kind of felt, you know, that uh, we were always building somewhat similar products, like for the web applications. You know, you always have to build identification, routing, pages, like all that kind of similar stuff. And it was pretty like repeating itself. But we also always had to relearn the new technology every time we were starting a new project. So we felt like that is a lot of work for something which is kind of always similar from the from the outside. So this was the main motivation of it wasp and basically the, we have we like set our set for ourselves the goal that we want to want to accomplish with wasp and that is we want to make it possible to write less boilerplate code we also want to ensure the best practices and enforce them as much as possible out of the box because like we also found it pretty hard to find the best ways to connect different pieces of stack Some, sometimes there even aren't yet the best practices defined so there's a lot of work just to figure out what actually is like the good and solid approach for the future. And the last part is actually we want to separate as much as possible the specification of the web application. This is what I mentioned before. What are the requirements like uh, what we what we actually want the application to do from the actual implementation? So how does how does it do it? Is it in React or Angular? What are the details of the implementation? So also a bit more about the current status. 
So we released alpha version in the last, like this December. And now we have more than 100 projects created with Wasp. And we also have first deployed apps. And yeah, we have also been backed by Twy Combinator. So we have some initial funding, which gives us opportunity to work on this full time. So we are super excited to see uh, what, we, what we can do. And yeah, we are right now in the batch. It lasts for about a few more weeks. So yeah, it's all exciting. So also to give you, to give you a bit more visual uh, timeline on what, what, what was going on with Wasp. So like we started about a year ago. And if you can see like this pretty horizontal slope was like the whole all part of us working on the prototype, like figuring out the features, uh, working with other developers, like seeing uh, what they want, what they need. And then basically around December, we released Wasp Alpha. And this is when we actually started getting some, uh, some serious, serious reaction. And people trying it out, using it for their side projects, using it on hackathons. And then this last part, uh, last spike was actually our Hacker News launch, which was also pretty successful. And people like were super, super positive and gave us a lot of good feedback. So very grateful for that. Awesome. So now I can actually talk a bit more about how it works. So let's see, like just uh, super basic uh, information. So I said like it's a programming language, but actually it's a DSL, so domain-specific language. It's not like a full Turing complete programming language, and we don't intend it ever to be. So the main idea is for you to, to describe high-level features in our Wasp DSL. And that is, as it said here, like authentication, routing, data models, queries, actions, or mutations, they're often called. And then so it and then you also write your specific logic, like view components in React, and then Node.js for your queries and uh, database actions and we are now also using prisma for modeling uh, data data modeling and all this at the end compiles right now to regular react and node.js application but also the cool thing is actually we can like we have control in what is actually being compiled so we could like also in the future support other technologies and like other architectures so this is also something which is uh, interesting potential to give you a bit more of a visual overview how it works so this is actually what i spoke about before Oh, you can see my mouse, that's, that's great. So here are VOSP files, that there can actually be multiple VOSP files very soon. So here you can define those high level features, which I mentioned before, and then actually React files and Node files, they serve for writing specific logic. So, and this VOSP uh, logic actually is like a glue between the view, compo view components and your database queries and mutations. And what happens like in the, in the under the hood, is basically our Wasp compiler takes all of this in and spits out the full co application code in React and Node.js. So we cover both front end, the back end, and deployment. Right now, we don't have yet AWS deployment, but we are like supporting images that can be deployed on Heroku or some other similar similar service. Yeah, we're using Prisma for the database. And I mean, the whole idea is that you don't have to touch this generated code. Ideally, you, you would never touch it. But in the case, especially now in this alpha stage, if Wasp is not flexible enough, you can actually take it away and just continue with it. It's actually like we put a lot of effort to make it uh, humor readable. So people are actually often uh, surprised how readable it is. So for now, it's it's pretty simple to take it out and continue if in case uh, Wasp is not yet uh, mature enough for your for your use case. Cool. And yeah, this is what I, what I said. So just to give you a bit, a little bit of feeling of how how the code works. So this is this is the, the sample of the Wasp code. So as I said, like it's a DSL, and in fact, it's like a simple configuration language. It's similar to JSON at some point, just to maybe a bit nicer at the moment. So for example, you could define like some basic properties of your application. This is the example of routing defined here, and this is actually like this highlighted green line. You can see how you can reference your outside code from, in this case, from React components. And then we also offer authentication support. So we have like several methods. You can choose which one you want, like which data model is going to serve as a principal or a user, but we are going to see uh, this all more in the action soon. And yeah, Prisma, as I said, like is, is a very good fit for Wasp because it's also declarative and the Wasp is aiming to be very declarative. So we are pretty much now using Prisma directly for data modeling. So here we just like have our own keyword for entity, which Prisma is calling a model. But like all this inside this parenthesis is actually just PSL, Prisma schema language. And then we are using that directly to just forward it to Prisma to take care of the database. So this is super handy. And yeah, we are happy that uh, Prisma is uh, doing all this heavy lifting for, for us. 
awesome. We have actually quite quick, quick time to come to the demo. So in this demo, I will show you. So we are going to build a simple to-do application. And I will show two use cases. Now, it depends on how much time we are going to have, but it might be even be enough. I'm going to show how we can do authentication in Wasp. And the second part is going to be more about standard code. So we are going to create some tasks and then list them. OK, cool, cool. Let me now just exit this. Yep. I'll just move this to the left. And I, I, I believe you can see my uh, terminal right now. OK, great. So we will just start with creating a new project. So actually, just to show you first how to. Matthias, can you make your font a bit bigger so that the audience ah. can see? Yes, sure. But let me just see how it is done. Uh, preferences, I guess. Preferences, appearance. I think command plus, if you're, yeah, you're on a Mac, command plus yeah, yeah. should do that. Command, ah, actually, that's a good idea. Oh, awesome. Wow, you're a hacker. Cool. Let me just try to. Uh, my Tmax got a bit great. Mm, ah, okay, actually, I just have to do it like this. Okay, cool. So the first thing we have to do, I will just show you how to actually install Wasp. So you would just go on our website and copy this curl. And if you if you don't believe the curl, you can also build it uh, yourself. So all you have to do is paste it in your terminal. So in my case, uh, it's not going to install it because I already have it installed. So it's like giving me a warning. But in your case, everything is just going to work, work smoothly. Cool. So we have done this. And now similar to like other tools, we can just write Wasp and we get all the commands to get started. So we are going to do Wasp new. Let's call it, let me just check the status. OK, we are good. Let's call it to do. And now Wasp created for us the, the new new project. So all we have to do is enter this project. So let's see what is in, in there. So here we can see, as I said, like this main Wasp file, and we already have like scaffolded several files for for us to get started more, more, more faster. So all we have to do is run Wasp start, and now it's like it's going to take about like thirty seconds because it's doing it's doing it for the first time. So please bear with me. So I mean, what is it doing now in the background? Actually, it's running you know npm install for the first time for both server and the frontend server. So this is why it takes a bit, but it's it's going to be much faster once this is done. Cool. I will in the meal I prepare. Uh, we can move this. I'm going to prepare my Visual Studio. Great. Yeah, so we are for now directly piping all the output from uh, web application server and backend server here. Probably going to make it a bit more verbose in non-alpha, <laughs> but for now you get all the information. Cool. So we can also maybe should I also uh, let's see enlarge my code here. Okay, cool. So we can see here the main wasp file, and let's also share this one. Now let me try to make it bigger. Okay, let me let it, let me know if you want uh, it even bigger. And yeah, I think in the meanwhile our app was served. Cool. So now we can just go to localhost three thousand. And yes, we can see it here. So here is actually like just a starting a page, a welcome welcome page of the application. And you can we can just take it from here. So I would now just go back to oops. Oops, sorry for this. Let's go back to the code. And yeah, as I said, like let's add authentication to, to Wasp. So this is how we are going to do it. So we are going to just there is a special command as I show you uh, showed you earlier. So I will just copy it over here so I don't have to type it. Okay, so basically, this block defines how is authentication going to work. So it says, okay, it's going to work like we need to have like an entity called user, which is going to serve as a user or principal entity, and we are going to support email and password as a, as a method. 
And in case somebody tries to authenticate and it fails, it's going to redirect him to login route, which we also don't have yet. So we are going to have to make it. So let's start actually with creating our user entity or data model, basically. So we will just do put it here. Now, as you probably know from using Prisma, we have to do database migration. So I just have this other terminal for that here. And the left side is currently crashing because it's, com it's complaining because we haven't done yet uh, the migration, but this is going to be fixed soon. Ah, sorry, I just have to go into Prisma. So let's do this migration. Edit user. Nice. So you can probably notice we are still using the older version of Prisma. So we still have like migrate save and uh, that stuff, but we are now actually switching to the newest version. So this is soon going to be only, only migrate dev. Cool. So we have, we did the migration. And then the next part, let's go back to the code. Uh, we also have to add the login and sign up routes. So let us just quickly do that. Let's put it right here. So here you can see we have like route for the login, which is referencing the login page component and very similar for the sign up, referencing sign up page component. So let's quickly create those pages. Let's call it the login page. And just copy it over. OK, so what are we doing here? We have a simple functional component, which is just uh, putting a login form here and a message in case you are not uh, yet, uh, if you don't have an account yet. But the cool thing, thing is actually here. So once you're using, uh, you defined in the Wasp, you're using authentication. Uh, Wasp is automatically for you providing this form. And you can, you can uh, import it in this special way. When you say add Wasp, you get access to this uh, Wasp namespace and the stuff that Wasp already prepared for you. So this is actually like comes out of the box. And then it's going to be very similar for the sign up page. Just come to it. So yeah, here it is. Sign up page. Let me just, if I mess something up, no, it's good. Sign up page. Okay, great. So now we have those two pages. So let's see what else is missing. And we also have to add, yeah, I think that is, that's pretty much it. Okay, great. Let's see what, okay, everything seems okay. And now let's see how it works. Okay, great, it's still the same, but now if we go to sign up route, yeah, we actually have the form which you can use immediately. So I'm just going to create an account. Okay, let's sign up. Cool, we are now signed up, but we cannot still we cannot see it yet. So let's add some more logic so we can actually see who is who is logged in. And for that, we also have one cool feature. So, I mean, we are building a to-do app. So let's say we want to have it protected. It's only visible to the users who are logged in. And in this main page, we are going to have like the, all the functionality. So what we can do now, we can say that, that there is auth required to access this page. And if you're not authenticated, then you cannot access it. So, and we will also add actually here the sign out functionality. So we can, we can try it out. Okay, so this is also a method provided by Wasp. So we can just import it. Let's add sign out component. Nice. And we can just here. Let's see above the logo. Okay, cool. So we should now show that we are signed in and give us a way to sign out. Oops, ah, we are, oh, we are missing something, which I forgot. And this is basically once you've said that uh, authentication is required for a certain page, then you immediately get access to, to the user in this, uh, in the props of the page. So 
create job here to use that. Cool. And so now it works. And you can see we are logged in. We can log out. And in case, so I'm now logged out. And in case I go now to the home page, I will just get redirected back to the login page. So this auth required thing is working. So let's now let's uh, log in back. Cool. And the next thing I wanted to show you is basically how to create tasks and list tasks. So let's let's do this now. So the next thing we need to do, so we are going to have tasks. So we need to create a data model for tasks, obviously. So let's do this. To make it simpler, uh, we are going to make tasks global. So it's not going to be per user, but let's say like all the users are editing one global pool of tasks, just to make it simpler for now. So we need to do another data migration right here. Yes. An A. Great. And great, yeah, we have another migration. You can also see like all the migrations are actually here in the folder and they get committed as usual to the versioning. And now let's continue. So now we actually come to the another part of the, as I mentioned, like crude functionality. So we are going to need a way to create a new task. So in VOSP, this is done with so-called actions, which is like also you, you also often called mutations, but so it's a, the same thing in this case. So we are going to, to create our own create task uh, action, which is going to be responsible for creating new tasks. And also like by saying, uh, this actually defines like which entities is this action creating. So this comes helpful for automatic refreshing and caching validation later. So we'll see how it works. Cool. So let's quickly create an actions uh, file. It doesn't have to be actions. Like it can be any file you want. So and now we can just do like a simple function, which is doing Cool. So what are we doing here? Uh, we have a function which uh, takes argument, which, which is pretty much provided by you. So any argument for like a description of the task, is it done or not? And context is provided by Wasp. And so pretty much context contains like all the information you need to work in the actions and queries. For example, like you get an access to the user and you can check if user is signed in or not. So you can protect the route. And also on the other hand, uh, you get access to Prisma. So this context actually is just a wrapper around Prisma. So you can uh, call database action to create a new, a new new piece of data. Okay, great. We created this. So let's see what else do we need. Now we need to add a way on the front end to do it. So let's see that now. Let's add a simple form. Let's just put it right here. Cool. So as you can see, this is just like a simple form. We are using state here to uh, track the state of the input uh, input uh, field. And this is basically just like description and button to submit. Great. So let's also just put it right here. Okay, let's say it's going to be And we will also have to use just here use state. And yes, another thing. Now we also get to import. So this is kind of similar. This like you know, uh, not not having to do API. Wasp is also doing this uh, magic magic for you. So basically, we get this one. Once we have created this uh, action task, we immediately get from in the namespace Wasp actions, we get the Wasp action create task, which we can import and immediately use on the front end. You can see it's being it's being used here uh, in the submit function of the of the form, and yeah, we're just giving a description in in there, and that's going to the database. Okay, great. I think that's pretty much it. So let's see if it works. Okay, all seems to be compiling. Ah, cool. Now we can actually create tasks. 
So let's say task one, task two, hello. So we cannot see it yet, but I can quickly show you actually how it works in the studio, which is basically Prisma Studio, which also comes in very nicely for, <clears throat> for this need. So yeah, you can see actually here, like we have we have one user, which is which is me, and we have three tasks, which are the ones that we just we just created. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's it. So I think we are pretty short on time. So I will not go through the actual creation of like displaying the task, but it's pretty similar. Like you just get to create a query. I can just quickly show it here, maybe. So we will we would also get to creating queries right here and create a query get tasks. And then here is the cool thing. We actually say, hey, so this this query is like it depends on these tasks, you know, task entities. So whenever this create task, like it affects an entity, it knows it needs to be refreshed and uh, to get the latest data. And this is why also we are using here on the right side, we are using use query to ensure this re reactivity in the component. So and yeah, we just, we just have like a queries uh, file we made, where we made a query, which is just doing the getting of the tasks and also we can protect it. So it's only for authenticated users. So yes, and I will just go back to the presentation right now. Let's see here. So this was it. We built a to-do app. I showed you auth and I showed you quickly how to create and list tasks. And just to finalize, like uh, we have like a lot of lot of stuff in the roadmap and like a lot of things that you would love to do, but are kind of still the vision. So for now we are only on JavaScript, but we plan to soon, very soon, add support for TypeScript, more identification methods. Then we know also SSR is really important. And we also think it makes a lot of sense to add support for serverless because like this would be a really good fit. So you could decide like actually what you want and also some teams, layouts, prototyping features to get you started faster. And like crazy, crazy vision is actually like support other stacks because like we could do it because we are building this layer of language which can generate the code in different, in different uh, languages. Also, it would be cool to be able to mix like your, so you don't, you, you wouldn't go to, you know, like JS file and then reference it in your boss file. You could just, directly uh, write it in your uh, boss files. Like uh, one other cool thing would maybe like be a visual editor on top. So we could like make some things uh, people could directly from browser or somewhere just edit uh, specific parts of the app. And yeah, like probably what is much needed is like monitoring, management, uh, performance monitoring. This is also what comes like with this whole whole stack. That's it. So how you can get involved. You can try Wasp out and give us feedback. This is super appreciated. Uh, we have Discord community, about 200 people. So it's really, it's really good to get your feedback there. You can also build your side projects and whatever you have in mind. People are using it now for hackathons. Don't you, do not use it like for super commercial stuff yet. It's in alpha, but like people are building stuff with it. And like whatever you build and deploy, we are going to give you a t-shirt. And at the end, yeah, if you like the product, you can just star us on a repository to give us support and join our Discord community. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. And we'll be happy to get any questions. Matia, thank you so much for that. That was Oops. really cool to see in action. I had heard about uh, Wasp, but uh, now we're seeing it in action. Um, and yeah, let's uh, open up uh, our, the Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat. Um, something that uh, came to mind uh, when you were demoing was the fact that you're defining the uh, the database schema essentially using Prisma schema, but within your Wasp uh, file. I was curious, how does that sort of interplay with Prisma uh, in terms of, say, syntax highlighting and things like that? Do you have any thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. I mean, as you could see, like we actually have a syntax highlighting in Visual Studio Code. My, my brother had like a lot of fun with making it work. It was actually easier than expected. But yeah, for Prisma, it, it wasn't so easy to get it uh, out of the box because obviously like we are wrapping some stuff around it. So I think it's not working completely yet. It's like half working, but I think it could even be done because like this uh, Prisma is declarative and has like pretty simple rules. I think it could just replicate. So we don't get it out of the box, but we could replicate it for sure. Mm -hmm. And when you create entities that you can then interact with uh, via CRUD operations in the front end, do you have the ability to control which fields you can actually modify from the front end? Like for example, in the user entity, you know, you probably want to hide the password field or, 
you know, even in the task entity, you might want to have some fields that you're not actually rendering or even sending mm -hmm. back to the client. How is that kind of logic defined? Mm -hmm, exactly. No, good question. I mean, right now, even with the authentication method, like uh, when you say like this is going to be email and password, we immediately know that you have actually you have to have a password field and the boss is immediately taking care not to send it back to the front end. So this is now like pretty rigid in this way, but we also plan to add like more roles and access control lists, uh, functionalities, especially to backend as well. So you will be able to say like this field is protected, this field should never go to the front end. Like, so all of this makes sense. And yeah, we, we plan to add that. All right, gotcha. Cool. Well, we have no questions coming in, so I'd like to thank you again. Um, and uh, you, the WASP website can be found at wasp-lang.dev. Is that the correct URL? Uh, yes, yes, that's it. Okay, cool. So I'll drop that in the chat. And uh, yeah, once again, thank you, Matia. Thank you for having me. All right.